This is probably the most nervous I've ever been to work with maybe any animal. This spider's venom is easily the most destructive arthropod venom in the world. If this spider bites you, you are guaranteed to die. But we're so confident that it won't that we can hold it in our bare hands. If this sounds insane, I get it. But let me introduce you to the six-eyed sand spider. This species is armed with the most dangerous bite of any spider on Earth. But it has never killed or even bitten a person. And we're doing this extreme experiment to prove why that is. My name is Harrison, and this is my twin brother, Evan. And on our mission to figure out what the most dangerous animals in the world actually are, tonight we're putting our lives on the line to see how much of a threat sand spiders really pose to humans. The goal is to test their behavior and use practical science to rank them on our list of the world's big five most dangerous spiders. But the thing is, not much is known about them apart from their venom because they're rarely seen by people and almost never documented. In fact, we're here in Chile alongside some experienced friends to become the first team ever to film them in the wild. Our target is the largest and most dangerous of all South American sand spiders, Sicarius thomasoides. And here in the southern reaches of the Atacama Desert, it is not rare. They can be surprisingly abundant in the right areas. And a local expert friend of ours has brought us to a mountainside that is supposedly crawling with them. And as fate would have it, after a few productive hours of hiking, Spencer called out that he saw a huge sand spider shoot across the path. Yo, 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 let me give me a container. That is the monster. Oh, that is absolutely the monster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is one stressful spider to work with, but we got him. Now that he is in the habitat that he feels safest, we can talk about where that name comes from, Six-Eyed Sand Spider. This is how they're gonna be spending most of their time out here. They're not really moving very much at all, but they'll be sitting in the sand just like this. You can see they have that incredible camouflage that helps them blend in perfectly to this environment, and that serves a number of functions for these spiders. The Six-Eyed Sand Spider is an ambush predator. This is a very fast species, but as with many ambush predators, Predators, their endurance isn't quite up to par with their speed, so they really need their prey to move in close to be able to get a meal. This animal is a remarkable burrier. It is possible to see them in ambush fully exposed, but much more frequently, they will actually bury themselves under the sand in order to allow prey to get in close enough for them to get a bite off. They're relying entirely on looking like the environment around them. Now, interestingly, one of the best ways to identify these spiders is actually by their eye arrangement. It's very unique because most spiders have eight eyes, but members of the family Sicariidae, to which these guys belong, long only have six, and it's very easy to identify any member of this family because of those eyes. And the interesting thing about that family is that it includes another spider that you are probably familiar with, the brown recluse. Mm -hmm. And of course, all the other recluse spiders around the world, like the Chilean recluse, we worked with on this trip, and that's actually why their venom has quite a similar function. They are evolutionarily related. The reason sand spider and recluse venoms are so dangerous is because they can attack any cell in your body and they're very difficult to treat. But that doesn't mean that they're equally dangerous. Chile is home to the deadliest of all recluse spiders, the Chilean recluse. But even their more potent concentration of necrotic enzymes can't stand up to the danger of a sand spider bite due to its higher venom yield alone. A literally microscopic dose of just 50 micrograms of Sicarius venom is enough to be life-threatening to humans. And this species has eight times that, so there's a much higher chance that it spreads through the body and causes systemic damage. But the biggest difference between sand spiders and the other most dangerous spiders in the world is the number of bites that they cause. While recluses, wandering spiders, and funnel webs cause hundreds or thousands of bites every year, there are only three sand spider bites on record in history. Only one of them was from South America. The other two, and the only fatal bite, were caused by the African Hexophthalma sand spiders, and no bites have ever been reported from Sicarius thomasoides. But this raises an interesting question. If they're so dangerous, why is there so little conflict between humans and sand spiders? Part of the answer comes down to their habitat. 
Sand spiders live in brutally harsh deserts that people don't tend to spend much time in, and just to survive out there, these arachnids have been pushed to the extreme. Now this is where it gets really insane. They won't move for long periods of time, and you may be thinking it's something like hours or maybe even days like some snakes will do. But actually, they can go for way longer than that. These spiders have been observed sitting in the same ambush position for weeks and sometimes even up to a month or more without moving almost at all. And they don't always get a choice as to when their meals will come, but they actually have the incredible ability to last up to a year with no food whatsoever. Now, under good conditions, they wouldn't be waiting nearly that long, but if they're really desperate, they can hold out for a long time. And get this, they actually never have to drink water, at least not liquid water, because they get everything they need for their metabolic processes just from the food that they eat. So it's very possible that this spider has never had a true drink in its entire life. It's a brutal lifestyle, but all of the sand spider's patience and careful preparation will pay off when an insect finally wanders too close. Sensing the vibrations from this beetle larva, it emerges from the sand in an instant, delivering the fatal bite much faster than most creatures can react. The insect writhes in pain as the venom rips through its system, but it's already too late. And within seconds, the sand spider has secured its meal. Almost nothing can escape the spider's trap once it enters, and in this harsh environment, they can't afford to be picky eaters. They'll take basically any kind of invertebrate they can get, including various insects, scorpions, and even other spiders, but their diet gets even crazier. Unlike other members of the Sicarius genus, whose fangs are too small to break the skin of vertebrates, the Chilean six-eyed sand spider is large enough to take down reptiles like lizards. That means they can break human skin too, which is one of the main reasons that this species in particular earned a place on this Big Five list. Their size, speed, and stopping power are all formidable. But the real key to the sand spider's hunting style is their insanely good camouflage. Now, they do have some specialized adaptations that help them with this camouflage. For one thing, they bury themselves completely in the sand using those front legs, which are lined with hairs called seti that allow them to get better purchase on larger quantities of sand to totally cover themselves up. In addition to that immaculate camouflage, their bodies are actually covered in microscopic hairs called macroseti, and those allow sand to literally stick to their exoskeleton and make them completely indistinguishable from the environment. And that makes sense, right? Because they're not burrowing super deep into the sand, and it does get quite windy here in the desert. So one gust of wind could completely ruin their camouflage and make it a lot harder to get a meal. But with those macro seti, it allows them to stay in ambush for very long periods of time without having to move or bury themselves again. The reason that sand spiders have evolved such an intense hunting strategy is the same reason that their venom is so destructive in the first place. It's because the deserts they call home are so challenging to survive in. Something we've observed with other highly venomous animals that face extreme ecological pressures is that they're unlikely to waste that venom on a threat because it's so critical to their survival. But now it's time to put that idea to the ultimate test, freehandling a wild six-eyed sand spider. Our hypothesis is that this guy won't bite us because the trade-off of potentially escaping the interaction isn't worth the cost of sacrificing their limited venom because it's so energy expensive to replace. But there's only one way to find out the truth. All right, I'm not gonna lie. This is probably the most nervous I've ever been to work with maybe any animal. There's just literally zero room for error with this interaction. Now, we are gonna take some precautions here. We don't wanna give it any possible chance to get disturbed or pinned under our hands or skin. So I'm actually gonna take my watch off here. We want as little obstruction for this spider as possible just to give it free reign of our skin. What a crazy sentence. All right, mom, dad, grandma, this is the part where you might wanna look away. Nice and gentle. Of course, it doesn't really file. That is the six-eyed sand spider 
in my bare hand. What an absolutely unreal feeling. Now I apologize if I'm gonna be looking at the spider more than the camera. I'm gonna lower my voice. That's probably for the best. And the reason for that is that this spider's venom is easily one of, if not the most destructive arthropod venoms in the world. This is the part where I wish we could tell you that we had anti-venom on hand to treat this bite, but we don't because none exists. There is essentially nothing you could do if this spider were to bite. If we were to take a bite from this animal, on top of pain and swelling at the bite site, we'd be looking at internal bleeding as the venom breaks down our blood cells, liquefies it beyond its normal capacity, and basically makes you hemorrhage internally. The six-eyed sand spider has a cytotoxic and hemolytic venom. Cytotoxins destroy cells and tissue, and this spider's venom does that incredibly effectively. And the hemolytic part is specifically destroying blood cells. And that is where things can get very dicey. As nerve-wracking as this interaction is for us, it's probably even more terrifying for the spider, though you wouldn't know it from the way it's behaving. When spiders are scared, they typically move erratically and won't sit still, but this one is showing us no signs of defensiveness whatsoever. It's really not moving much at all, and even when it does choose to move, it's being very slow and methodical. Overall, their behavior is much more exploratory than defensive, even in this extreme scenario, which gives us some pretty useful information. Clearly, sand spiders aren't interested in interacting with people, so even if you do encounter one, you're essentially not in any danger of taking a bite as long as you don't try to touch it. But this is still a wild animal, and its mood can change very quickly, so we can't afford to let our guard down here. And on that note, I'm just gonna see if it will transfer from hand to hand now. There we go. Nice, nice, nice. Yes, that is the muddy shot. And this is what we wanted to show. The question that we came to Chile to answer, firstly, is will it use its venom? And the answer there seems to be a resounding no. But the next question, and the one I think we're both really interested in answering, is why even this spider, which, as Harrison just mentioned, has an incredibly destructive venom, does not want to use it. And in the case of this animal, it's really the only mechanism they possess to capture their prey. And they have such a limited quantity of venom that if they waste it on a predator, it could be very likely that a meal comes by and he misses his chance. And he would maybe not get another chance for weeks or months. So in an instance where we are not applying pressure to it, we're not breathing on it, we're not jerking it around, all we're doing is keeping it calm and stable. It doesn't have a reason to waste that precious resource, its most valuable tool to help it survive. And seriously, look at what it's doing right now. Next to nothing, it's just like any other spider. It is no more inclined to bite than the black widows or the brown recluses that we've worked with, than the Brazilian wandering spiders that we've worked with. Now, I don't want to totally push our luck here. Yeah, this is a precarious situation. I don't want to. You can drop it into my hand if you want. Can you hit him? Don't let him go up my shoulder. Yeah, right. This is where it helps to have twins in the field. It's funny, we said before this that we were going to laugh at ourselves for being nervous. I'm laughing at myself internally because this guy is an absolute sweetheart. Spider is back in container. Twins are alive. Parents <laughs> and grandparents are happy. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> So with everything considered, how dangerous is the six-eyed sand spider really? We can't ignore the raw destructive power of their bite. That alone easily puts them among the big five most dangerous spiders. There's no other spider we know of whose bite is so damaging that there's virtually no possible way to treat it. But when you factor in their actual biology, things get a bit more complicated. See, they require such specific habitats and their movements are so limited that people don't encounter them very often. And they don't do well in highly developed areas either, so you don't have to worry about them showing up in your house. And given their generally calm behavior and unwillingness to bite, there isn't much direct conflict happening between sand spiders and people. So overall, we rank the six-eyed sand spider at the number four spot in the big five most dangerous spiders on Earth. They just don't quite stack up to some of the other members of this list. This video is part of our ongoing mission to document the world's most extreme animals. And with this episode, we're starting our first major project to create a list of the most dangerous animals of each group around the world. 
Our goal with this danger project is to use our experiences to find better ways for humans and dangerous wildlife to coexist. So if that's something you want to see more of, subscribe to stay up to date on the mission. In Chile, coexisting with dangerous animals is a fact of daily life. But it's not the sand spider that's causing problems. There's another spider here that poses a much bigger threat to people, because this one actually is moving into our houses, the Chilean recluse. To learn more about this human spider conflict and what you can do about it, check out this video. And with that, we hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next one.